Good day to you, and welcome back to the Baron's News Desk, covering the latest happenings and goings on in the world of tabletop card gaming. Hot on the heels of the announcement of the new Magic the Gathering set entitled Modern Horizons, there has been much discussion and speculation in the community. This includes one of the pieces of artwork that was featured in the Magic the Gathering live stream on Twitch.tv. The illustration featured behind Mr. Cassius Marsh seems to feature some sort of living creature that has been fused with a wooden elemental. If we attempt to do a side-by-side -side comparison with an existing magic card, it is highly likely it could be the card Gaia's Embrace. For two green green, it is an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample. It has the activated ability of paying one green to regenerate enchanted creature. Being that this set is being touted as a drafting set, in fact, that is what the pre-release weekend format is going to be, this could be quite a powerful card in the limited and or drafting format. However, considering that you basically need at least five mana, it's as unlikely that it's going to replace other meta cards in modern, such as Rancor, which currently serves as the cornerstone for green aggro. What are your thoughts? Do you believe that this is in fact Gaia's Embrace, or do you have suggestions on other cards it could possibly be? There have also been a couple of clarifications from Mr. Mark Rosewater, who serves as the head designer of Magic the Gathering and has held the position since the year 2003. On Mr. Rosewater's official blog, one of his readers asked this question. Can you explain to someone who doesn't play modern what's so innovative and exciting about Modern Horizons? Not trying to be adversary, I believe he meant to say adversarial, just curious as a non-modern player. And yes, as someone who plays mostly the Commander format, I am quite interested in his answer. He responds, I think the best way to explain why this set is applicable to more than just modern players is to go back to where the set began. When Ethan and I first pitched this set in the hackathon, here's what we said. One of the cool things about a supplemental set is that we can focus on ideas that we're unwilling to do in a standard legal set. What if we took off the shackles and just made a set full of cards that we know players would love, but are hard to do with all the limitations that come with a normal magic set? What if we go deep into the creative and mechanical elements of magic's 25 year history and just had a blast designing cards? We could make something really awesome. It took us the week of the hackathon to put together our proof of concept, but once everyone saw it, we were given the green light. And then we had a lot of fun making a very interesting set. You don't have to be a modern player to love Modern Horizons, just a magic player. Now the Ethan that Mr. Rosewater is referring to is Ethan Fleischer who has worked at Wizards of the Coast for the past eight years and currently serves as a senior game designer. At least this according to his LinkedIn profile. Another one of Mr. Rosewater's readers asked for clarification. He asked, will Modern Horizons be a limited print run or printed for as long as demand holds? Mr. Rosewater replied that it is not a limited print run. What this usually translates to is that Wizards of the Coast tries to anticipate the supply and demand. For sets that do not have limited print runs, they are subject for reprinting if the supply is exhausted and WotC feels that there needs to be more supply out in the market. However, not everyone within the Magic community is thrilled with the announcement of Modern Horizons thus far. Reddit user Brisbane Broncos Rule, interesting name, makes the point that there was no announcement of reprints of some of the modern staple cards such as the Fetch Lands. A cursory glance at MTG stocks at the prices of some of these Fetch Lands and you can certainly see why his feathers are ruffled. One of the more expensive Fetch Lands, the Scalding Tarn, can go for upwards of $90. And considering that you're going to want a playset of four, we're talking $350 
dollars just for four fetch lands. And speaking plainly, it is cards like this that keep new entrants from entering into the format. When you see the hefty price tag associated with some of these key cards, it can easily turn away and frustrate players that would like to get into the format otherwise. And finally, I would like to know your thoughts. If there are no reprints of some of the staple cards in modern that the modern community has been asking for for years, is that a turnoff to you? What are some of the lands that are older than 8th edition that you would like to see reprinted in Modern Horizons and thus brought into the format? Thank you ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more news from the Baron's News Desk. Until next time! Cheers.